So the wireless extra fly MC1 is of course pretty much the same as the wired one and at the same time the performance and features are pretty much the same as on the M42 one. So no issues with the sensor whatsoever, the polling rate is stable, there is no abnormal amount of DPI deviation and the motion latency is low. So is the click latency and the lift of distance is under 1 dvd. The mouse feet are the exact same shape as they were with the MC1 and these are again very good. They work well with smooth and rough pads. The main mouse buttons feel pretty much the exact same on my MC1 wireless as they do feel on the wired one so these are fairly light nice and tactile, easy to actuate. The clicks have a good amount of pre and post travel to keep them feel smooth and still responsive. There is a very small amount of bottom bubble when I'm really forcing it, but nothing that I would feel in real use. Very well implemented KLG M8.0. By the way, the MC1 is very good for clicking that subscribe button, but so is pretty much any mouse. The side buttons feel better, so on the wired MC1 these are a little bit mushy and quite light, but on the wireless one they are a little bit harder to actuate and feel more premium, they feel more snappy I would say. So overall the button implementation is very good with this one again. The surface finish is still the same, so it has this translucent kind of shell, and I have to say that the feeling of this is very nice towards my hand. It's smooth, quite grippy and feels better than the standard kind of surface finish on the M42 for example. I like it quite a lot, but I would want to get rid of all these holes on the top shell and on the sides. There are these very specific parts where Rocket Jump Ninja holds his fingers and there are no holes, but I hold my fingers nowhere near these spots. In hand the mouse also feels very well built so there is no creaking, no side flex. When I'm squeezing the sides I can't really even in this case make proper creaking sounds happen. I would say it's very well built. But let's move on to the differences and those are of course the main things that I think you guys are the most interested in. And first one is the weight, so the wireless one weighs about 6 grams more by specification, but on my scale at least it's only about 3 grams, as the MC1 wireless is about 62-63 grams and the wired one is 59-60 to grams. So the difference is about 3 grams and I can maybe feel it when I'm holding this in hand, but in game I sure as hell do not feel any difference. I would actually say that overall with all kinds of motion the wireless one feels more lightweight because of the lack of the cable so you get that free flowing experience you do with wireless mice. Of course because the mouse is very small it doesn't feel extremely lightweight. To get this mouse feel as lightweight as something larger like the super light it would have to weigh about 50 grams. But the fact at this point is that ExtraFi can very easily strip some weight off this mouse by removing the RGB and having a smaller battery. And then you could remove all of these holes because at that point I don't think the mice mouse needs to be any lighter than it would be. And then lastly we will talk about the new hump and I will tell you guys how I felt with it and the old hump in the game. And actually let's start by looking at it here in the browser because it's really easy to see the difference from this picture. So this is the original back shell and you can see that it has quite a large hump here and it quite aggressively slopes down towards the back. And then the new shell basically has no hump whatsoever. This was something that got me excited about the MC1 wireless because the hump wasn't exactly as I would want it to be in this shape. And luckily in real life the hump is pretty much exactly as it showed in those pictures, so there is pretty much no hump whatsoever here, making the mouse quite low profile. The flat top shell is mostly designed for fingertip grip in my opinion, but it can actually work quite well for claw as well if you are willing to adapt. It makes the back shell feel quite weird because the two highest points are basically here and these are the parts that will be touching your palm. So it actually feels pretty much the same for a claw without the top shell completely and with the flat shell. But luckily the corners feel a little bit more rounded with the shell. This is something that can feel quite uncomfortable to start with and you can't really drive the mouse towards the bottom of your palm like this. But once you just comfortably hold the mouse and claw it, you actually have these two points that make the most contact with the mouse and it feels okay and very mobile and I get surprisingly good amount of control with that. Changing the shells is very easy, so there is one screw right here on the bottom of the shell and once you have screwed it out, you just basically pick this one out, take it out and then you put it back in, you just press it with a little bit of force, it clips in 
And you really do not even need to use that screw because it's quite locked in as it is now. I played a lot of CSGO with both of these shells and with very good results. I hit some nasty clips for sure my precision and target switching were on point. But I was missing some flick shots but I still haven't used the shape for that long. Tracking also felt good in Kovacs and Apex but what actually felt the best for me by far is vertical aiming. Something like controlling recoil in Apex and CSGO felt super natural. I'd say for this purpose I would just use the OG top shell. The new back shell is of course also very good for vertical aiming especially if you fingertip grip because the hump won't be on your way. But basically the way I control recoil a lot is I just move the mouse vertically in my hand and when I pull it back towards my palm this new top shell just feels quite uncomfortable. We also of course have to consider the fact that is this mouse worth 120 bucks? Well there are no real issues with the mouse and overall it's a very good one but the fact is that the shape can be very very polarizing. And even though I say it's fun to use, it's of course mostly because I've tried so many mice and let's face it, a lot of them are Zowie clones. So trying something unique like the MC1 can be a very nice experience. But in my opinion, that should not improve its value. So it's generally really hard to recommend. But if you're somebody that fingertip grips and likes to try a new kind of shape, then yes, I can recommend it for you. For claw grip, I think it's a little bit too much and there are mice like the Extra M42 that's just insanely good for claw and others like the Superlight and the Viper V2 Pro is even quite good. So I would not really get this for claw grip unless you really want to experiment and you really are ready to adapt. I will keep using this mouse more because I had a lot of fun testing it. The new top shell is also kind of refreshing and this time around I did not get any kind of wrist pains using the mouse. That could be because I haven't used it for that long yet or because my wrist has gotten better from what it was. Hard to say for now what's the real cause. So overall it's a very good mouse and pretty much exactly what I was expecting from Extra 5. The main problem with the wired version for me wasn't that I could not aim with it but the fact that it did cause me quite a bit of wrist pains which haven't caused co or come yet with the wireless version. Thank you so much for watching. Check out any of these videos somewhere on the screen. There is the M42 wireless and there is a bunch of other as well. If you enjoyed the video, hit that like button. If you enjoy my content, hit that subscribe button and see you in the next one.